Let's do this. A dish as flavorful and balmy as the delicate fingers of the gazelle that cooked it. I think he really liked this dish. That's like a, it's very intense. There's a lot of emotion there. Hey there, I'm Sola Aweli, and this is Ancient Recipes with Sola. In each episode, we're gonna take a dish you may recognize and attempt to recreate one of the oldest versions of it to ever exist. It's a little history, it's a little cooking, and it's a whole lot of me. What's not to love? In this episode, we're gonna be making a 1,000-year-old hangover cure. Oh. We're going back to what's been called the Islamic Golden Age of 10th century Baghdad and pulling out a recipe from one of the oldest Arabic cookbooks. This dish is called kishkia, and it was beloved by the Caliph al madi for curing his hangovers. He even wrote a poem about it, but we'll get into that later. All right, I'm excited. Let's get cooking. So we're gonna start our stew. For the kishkia, we're gonna need some bone-in lamb. We are using today, we've got some shank, but I imagine that you could use cut up shoulder, leg, whatever, whatever lamb has some bone in it. It's gonna give us a lot of flavor. It's gonna give us all that collagen when it cooks down. But because we are using something like tough and bone in, it's gonna take a while to cook down. We're throwing in these couple extra bones too, because why not? It's gonna give us a lot of nice, unctuous flavor. Now, traditionally, Muslims don't drink but back in the 10th century, it really just depended on who the caliph was and what their laws were. So some people did drink back then. Now, what, we're also going to add some oil. This is a really simple stew, so everything's just going to simmer together until it, you know, gets tender. Here we're going to add a few slices of galangal. So galangal is in the same family as ginger. It's also a rhizome, but it's a lot more floral. I feel like it's less like spicy and more aromatic than ginger. And we're gonna add some fresh herbs. Now, adding fresh herbs into a stew isn't something you see a lot in like Western cuisine, but in the Middle East it's done pretty often. As the herbs cook down, their flavor really changes. So I'm gonna chop up a big handful of oregano. Oregano was found throughout the Mediterranean um, and it eventually spread throughout Eurasia, but it has a long history there. So this is definitely something they would have used. And we're also gonna put some dill in here, which dates back all the way to like the first century. They even wrote about it in the Bible. So it's definitely something that would have been readily available to people back then. Now, let's get our dill. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a chop. Nothing crazy, cause this is gonna like totally melt. This is gonna simmer for a long time and really cook down. Now, the time that this cookbook was written was considered the golden age of Islam. And in fact, Baghdad was at one point one of the largest cities in the world. So the round city of Baghdad was actually an awesome fortified city and an architectural wonder in its own right. Being centrally located between Asia and Europe, it became a hub for scholars, philosophers, and even trade between Europe and the Tang Dynasty in China. Um, all right, here we go. Lots of dill, and then we're gonna add a handful of dried chickpeas, a big handful. These are going in dry, we haven't soaked them or anything. This is gonna simmer for so long that it's gonna get nice and tender. And we're gonna add some sliced onion. Now, I'm just gonna cover this with water and we're gonna let it cook for several hours. We want it to get really nice and tender before we proceed. Khalif al -Madi, he loved this dish so much, he even wrote a poem about it and there's an excerpt of it in my pocket. Khalif al Madi, he loved Kishkia so much that he actually even wrote a poem about it. Um, it's written in Al Raq's cookbook, and I happen to have an excerpt in my pocket if you're interested in a reading. You are! You're interested? Okay, while this simmers away, let's do this. A dish as flavorful and balmy as the delicate fingers of the gazelle that cooked it. Its pale hue shimmers like her contour flickering through her sheer gown. Having eaten it, an intoxicated one will be all anew and the hangover will itself renew. Whoever share this meal with us will pay his favors in full only if of it he has his fill. I think he really liked this dish. That's like a, it's very, Intense. There's a lot of emotion there. 
Our lamb has been simmering away for a few hours, so it's starting to get really tender. It's like almost there. Now we're gonna add some vegetables and some finishing touches. So we're gonna add Swiss chard, spinach, and some kale. So they would have had spinach and lettuce. That's like something that definitely was around back then. Al Warak says that this can be like whatever seasonal veggies you've got, and we've got kale. That's the season for the veggie we're in. That's the veggie for the season we're in. So we're gonna go with that. I'm gonna add a whole bunch of veggies. I'm just roughly chopping it. We want it to kind of wilt and be like a fresh note because the herbs we added earlier have totally like cooked down. And I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna use the stems. I'm a believer of charred stems, totally. But what I do is I cut my stems a little bit smaller and then I keep the leafy bit a little bit bigger. So the stems get a little more uh, time to get tender for us. But I mean, I would imagine just use whatever like green veggies you've got. I can see why this would be a good hangover cure because you know, there's a lot of good stuff in here. Rough chop. I can imagine this being really nice and um, delicate with lettuce as well. They definitely had lettuce back then. Now for the kale, I'm gonna strip the stems. Kale stems need like quite a lot of work to process, to break down, so it's good to strip them. You don't have to lose them though. You can hold on to them, blanch them, blend them up, make a dip, but they do need like a good bit of cooking to get tender. And we're not gonna do that much cooking now. Now we're just gonna wait for everything to soften. It's not gonna braise like we just did. So to strip the kale, you just kind of hold on to the fat stem at the bottom and look at that, so fun, very satisfying. And I'm gonna just coil this up and run my knife through it. We don't have to get too precise or anything. And then we're gonna have the most important ingredient, the kishk, the kashk. Depends on who you're asking, I guess. Okay, just kind of gather the kale and run your knife through it, no big deal. It's a stew, so it doesn't have to be super precise, you know? Now we already added some onion earlier and that onion's been cooking down and it's gotten really sweet and tender. And now we're gonna add another layer of onion flavor by adding some finely diced onion right now. This isn't gonna cook as much, so it's gonna give us like a different kind of flavor. This, this onion's gonna have a little bit more bite. Now we're gonna get to the kishk. So kishk or kashk can be a lot of different things depending on the region we're coming from. Sometimes it can be just a uh, fermented dairy that's been cooked down or dehydrated, or even sometimes it's like squished together into a ball that you have to like grate to use. Today, the kind we found, we have a powdered version, and this is just fermented dairy that's been dried. And we also have a liquid version. And this is, it's like really thick and almost has the texture of a sourdough starter. It's really different from yogurt. And it has a different sour flavor. It has like a little bit of funk. There's other kinds of kishk or kashk in different regions where they'll actually cook the fermented dairy with barley and then dehydrate it. It's just an old method for preserving dairy. And you can find it in a lot of places. They have it in Greece, the Balkans, the Middle East. It's a really popular ingredient and it's a great way to like save your dairy. So we're gonna mix that with a little bit of verjou before we add it to the pot. Verjou is a sour grape juice, so it's basically the stuff you press from grapes before you turn it into wine. It's a, a really great ingredient to cook with, especially if you wanna add some acid or brightness, but wanna go for something a little more chill than vinegar. So I'm gonna dissolve our kish, again our kash. This is like, this is a lot, but in the recipe, Alwarak says that you can adjust it to your taste. We're gonna put it all in there and see how sour this gets. I know a lot of people don't like kish or kash because it is pretty funky. But I, I am a really big fan of it. You can use it in a lot of dips. There's this one dip called kashki badamjen, which uses this kind of kish in there. It's like a eggplant dip with that stuff in it. And it's, it's just really nice because it's got this funk. If you're a big fan of funky cheese like telegio or poiss or even blue cheese, then you're really gonna like it. If you don't like that stuff, you're really gonna not like it. But I, I like it. it. It smells cheesy. I mean, for me, like my modern day hangover cure is a cheeseburger and that's like meat and cheese. And I feel like you're gonna kind of get those vibes here. We got our meat, we got our funk. I'm just stirring this up to dissolve so it doesn't clump in our stew. 
And as soon as that dried kish hit the water, it got funky. Like it smells, it smells funky in here. It also smells a little bit like yeasty even. All right, I'm gonna stir this in and we're gonna let this cook until the onion just gets tender. We want the onion to get tender and all the veggies to wilt. And I'm also gonna add some cinnamon and cumin. We did look into this to see what makes this a good hangover cure and it mostly boils down to the hydration and the carbohydrates. And that makes sense, because you know, you, you, need, you need to hydrate after a big day drinking. Now, after adding the cinnamon and the kashk, this has a very strong aroma. I have no idea what this is gonna taste like. I have never had anything like this before. In my experience, when I've used kish or kash, I haven't really used other spices, so I'm interested to see how this is gonna taste with the cinnamon and the cumin and all that. But we're gonna just let this simmer for a few minutes until the veggies get tender and we're gonna finish it up. Final touches, we're gonna sprinkle a little bit of clove and this herb called spikenard. It's a relative of honeysuckle and it's very aromatic and it's supposed to help with everything. It's like supposedly a cure-all. Insomnia, gastrointestinal problems, anxiety. So I can see why you would add it to a so-called hangover cure because it seems like it cures everything. And now the recipe says you put it away, turn down the fire, and we're just gonna let it gently simmer until we're ready to serve. And that's it. That's our kishkia. So my kishkia has come off the stove and the lamb is super tender. The veggies, the chard, the kale, the spinach, everything is like totally melted in there. Our garbanzos are nice and plump and tender. And this smells very, very cheesy. The kishk made it really thick and creamy. It's almost like I finished it with cream or cheese. I'm kind of blown away that there isn't cheese in here because that's exactly what I smell. I smell lamb and cheese, which um, I, I don't see anything wrong with that so far. I think I'm gonna give it a taste. Okay, I'm gonna dig in. All right, this is a really big bowl. It smells super funky. So I'm really interested because lamb's a little, has a little like funk and the cheese has a little funk. I'm gonna try and get a bite with some veggie, some chickpea, some lamb. Okay. Hmm. I was expecting this to be so sour from the verjou and we put quite a lot of kishk in there. It's not that sour. It really mellowed out from cooking for just a few minutes. Instead, it's like really creamy, really, really rich. This is a heavy, heavy dish. Like I'm, I'm feeling the carbs. I'm feeling, I'm feeling the richness. Uh, the chard's really silky. There's a lot of soft, tender textures. So this is something that I can see like being really easy to eat. I also see how something this filling can really, you know, help cure that hangover vibe. But um, this is a lot like um, something I've had before. It tastes a lot like halim, which is a, a lamb stew from Pakistan. The only difference is that doesn't have kish, but it's pretty similar to a lot of stewy lamb things that you see today with yogurt. So it's not like this crazy funky sourness, which was what I was expecting. It definitely smells super funky, but when you get in there and taste it, it's just creamy and rich. I can see why this is his favorite dish. It's like, it just feels really comforting. It's almost like a lamby version of mac and cheese in like a really weird way. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please subscribe. And uh, as always, hit us up in the comments if there's like a vintage or an ancient recipe you wanna see us try out, and I'll see you next time.